really excited to have the chance to explore this topic with everyone here. And I'm very interested to understand what your biggest questions are to make sure that as you leave today, you can walk away with one new idea, one new question, one new strategy, or one new resource to help you to better leverage your success factors, achieve success as you define it, and be able to really strategically design your career pathway. So on that note, we're gonna be keeping an active eye on the chat today. If you wanna learn more about me, reach out to me on LinkedIn, connect with me uh, through my website, and really do stay connected. Today's focus is about leveraging your success factors. It's about tapping into your internal strength, those inner characteristics that will magnetize success to you so that it's not that you're always chasing after it, but that you're able to leverage your success factors so that success begins to come to you and continually build over the course of your career pathway. So either way today, whether you are just starting out in your career, I've got, we've got my, you know, my college interns are here with us today. There are some folks who are just now figuring out what they wanna do, what their skills and their strengths are, and how they're gonna use them in their career over time. I also know that quite, I see quite a few of my colleagues and, uh, and friends in the room as well, as well as many of you I haven't had a chance to meet yet, who are really experienced, you've been around for a while, and you may be listening today to think about how you can continually expand to strengthen your, your success factors and to also be able to help support your emerging leaders, the people who you're mentoring. So whichever lens you're listening and, and thinking about today, really about how to attract success to you. So let's start with where you are today. Right now, you'll see a poll launched on the screen. Take a moment to answer that poll. I'm curious, what is your biggest challenge with strategically leveraging your professional success factors? We're gonna hit all three of these areas today, but knowing where today's priorities are with everyone who's here, I'm gonna craft how much time I spend in the 60 minutes we have together to make sure I'm really addressing your biggest needs. So we're watching those polls and you guys can also see where are other people's perspectives? Really identifying your success factors, communicating them to others, knowing how to strategically leverage those success factors and wanting to strengthen your skills in all three areas. Really exciting, so not, un, not un, well, not unexpectedly, wanting to strengthen my skills in all three areas is great. That shows such a growth mindset in this community, which is exactly what I have an experience every time I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or show up at one of our NAW networking events. We wanna be able to do all three a little differently and a little more strategically. So we'll be focusing on all three today. So we'll leave that poll up for just another moment. We have just stopped, um, we just ended that poll and now we can see we're gonna hit all three. So with that said today, knowing that we need to do all three, we're gonna start with the first area. Before we do, one of the areas, oh, we gotta share the results. Let's make sure that everyone gets a chance to see those results and share those results there on leveraging those skills and take one more look at that, and then I'm gonna stop sharing, and we're gonna jump into our next concept. Okay, with that said today, here's the larger context. Before we jump into figuring out how to identify your success factors, how to communicate those, those success factors, and then how to leverage your success factors and design that career pathway, here's some context. Many of you may have seen this already, this diagram that aiming for ikigai, that Japanese concept, that ultimately, what it really means is it's that thing that, that motivates you, that gets you out of bed in the morning and makes you feel that your time here is worth it. It's that reason for being. And it's a combination of who you are, what are you good at, what do you love to do, what does the world need, what need, what problem are you solving, and what can you get paid for? With that said, sometimes, most commonly, you end up in maybe two of those vectors or maybe three if you're fortunate. The goal is to really aim for Ikigai and design success the way that you define it so that you're aiming for all four. Because without aiming for all four, you may be 
really delighted and, and just feeling like you're not financially getting what you need, or you feel really satisfied and, and you're, you're content, but you're not really feeling like you're making a difference, or maybe you're, you're super comfortable, but there's an emptiness to it, or maybe you're just, you're just, there's just such a sense of uncertainty because you don't have the stability that you need. So we're going to be talking today through this context about how to aim for Ikigai and really wake up one day. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because there have been times in my own career where I've been in, in different sectors where I was either making money and I felt like I wasn't making a difference, which for me is the core to everything I do, meaningful relationships and meaningful work. For you, it may be different. But knowing that level of satisfaction where a couple of years ago, I woke up, I was sitting at my kitchen table, I was, I was having my, my coffee or my tea at the time, and I looked out the window, I was like, I'm happy. I am living my ikigai, my, my today's ikigai, how I define success today. And for me, if I can give you guys just at least one tip or one strategy to be able to aim and get your own ikigai. I want everyone to feel that same level of personal satisfaction, personally and professionally. So today you've got two questions to consider. One, if you haven't ever thought about this before, how do you define success? Not how did your family define success for you, or not how your, your community may define success, or your college professor told you how to define success. How do you define success in all of those areas? What is it for you? And it, it's a lot more now with an integration of work and personal and professional quality in terms of what you define as success. And then start considering today, how are you going to strategically achieve success as you define it? So let's start the work. If you don't already have something to write with, you know, if you're, if you're a parent, go grab your kid's crayon if it's in reach. If you've got a pencil or some paper, or you've got your favorite pen that just makes you so happy when you write with it, or maybe you're, you've got an awesome app that you're using right now, take some notes and let's interactively reflect upon these different pieces. Okay. As you're getting your materials, Here's some of, this is one of my favorite quotes. I love this quote so much that it was the first sentence of my graduate thesis. Getting the bigger vision of what you achieve for success, and it is a habit. How you believe in yourself, how you think about yourself, how you envision your career is a habit. All communication is a habit. So today we're gonna to take the initial steps to start forming that habit, to really, really get clear on getting the imagination of where you envision yourself to be if you're not already there so you can then achieve it. So let's jump in on identifying step one, your success factors. And Stephanie, thank you so much. I'm already seeing some strategies being tossed into the chat. Uh, Stephanie was sharing something that really made a difference. So uh, if you were like Stephanie, have a strategy or a tip or something you find beneficial, serve as a resource today. Leverage your success factors, what's been working for you, and add those resources into the chat so that you're not just benefiting from me, you're benefiting from one another. So thank you to those of you who have already started to do it. Uh, Robert, you most certainly can use your own crayon. Listen, if I'm going to reach out, I have a, uh, my own that has gotten me through this pandemic. I have an entire, an entire collection of 50 colored pencils. So you, can may, you may certainly use your own. All right, I'm glad to hear that there's some uh, kindred creative spirits in this group today who are thinking about more than just with their brain. So some of you are like me, we're, we're overthinkers and we need those creative outlets to really leverage our success factors and get clear. So whatever you're using right now, here's where we're gonna get started. I see our personalities and our characteristics and our skills as part of a spice rack. So some of you may be spending as much time in your kitchen as I am right now. And in your spice rack, you probably have a few go-tos, your favorite spices that you throw in your recipes that are your favorite. And then somewhere for some reason in the back shelf, or if you're spinning around a Lazy Susan, there's some spices that for some reason you haven't thrown away. And you're like, maybe I should try using them. And we put them in, it just ruins the whole recipe, and you put them there. Inside of you, You've got all of your different spices, all of the things that make you who you are. And it's really important to recognize what those spices are that you want to lead with strategically in your career. Because here's what happens. 
Also being aware of the spices that are in the back shelf that when you are tired, when you are exhausted, when you are under high stress, that come to the front and spin around and come out and you lose respect for yourself and the way you communicated or the way that you engaged. And it's, we all have them. We have that tone or we just have that impatience or whatever those spices are in you. The goal, when you can leverage your success factors, and you know what they are when you show up in your best light, not those days when you're tired and cranky and not those days when someone else says you're not always like that, knowing what your strengths are so that you can align your thoughts, your words, and your actions consistently under all conditions. And when we do inevitably, because we're human, get off track in our careers or when sides of us come out, either in the workplace or professionally, personally, we can spin that back around and pull those spices out that we respect the most about ourselves. So let's find out what's in your spice rack. Let's find out what some of your success factors are. All right, this is where you're going to need that crayon. This is where you're going to need that colored pencil. You're going to need your 10 or you're going to need that typing app that you're using. Right now, for the next 15 seconds, I'm going to pause and give you 15 seconds to write down a list of at least three of the learned skills that you use every day to be successful. If you are a student, these may be learned, school, uh, learned skills that you're learning in school right now. If you are an experienced professional, these are things that you've used throughout the course of your career. It might be that you're really good at math or you're super highly organized or you're really good at taking complicated concepts and simplifying them. It may be that you know what an Oxford comma is and you know how to use it and why. What are three learned skills? Maybe you're really good at building things. Maybe you're a carpenter or a tradesperson. What are three of your learned skills that you use every day to be successful and jot them down? And if you can do more than three, then hit five. I'm gonna pause for 15 seconds while you write. Okay, don't put that list away yet, because now those are the easy pieces. Those are the concrete skills, and that's usually where we stop. When you're looking at a job description, when you are creating a job description, when you are speaking about what you do, and you're in a networking event and says, what do you do? We typically talk about our skills, these skills. That's not what's going to get you the success throughout your career pathway. So if you're going to be strategic and you're going to leverage and communicate your success factors, you need to know the hidden success factors that we often don't take the time to consider. Right now, using that crayon or that colored pencil or your favorite pen or your app without being modest, what do you most respect, appreciate, and value about yourself? when you show up in your best light. And do not worry about whether anyone would agree with you. My sister's like, you, you're not, that was not how you show up. Not that dynamic. When you show up in your best light, when a sticky situation comes in and you say, I handled that well. What you respect about yourself in your best light. I'll give you some examples. Maybe you are incredibly good at managing time. Maybe you're kind, empathetic. Maybe you are super analytical. Maybe you're the kind of person who can think really quickly and speak without having to overthink it. Maybe on the flip side, you are very thoughtful and reflective and you always take the time to speak so that you respond and not react. Maybe you are very compassionate. Maybe you're enthusiastic. Maybe you're really good at stretching time and getting a lot done. Maybe you're efficient. What is it about you, those characteristics that make you who you are? And make a list right now of three to five on your list. And then see if you can bump it up to 10. Now, this is often where people get stuck because they may not have thought about it before. And for some people, it's really uncomfortable to think about themselves or to tell other people who they are because there's a modesty piece there or they feel that they shouldn't be spending a lot of time where they get embarrassed. Like, don't talk about me. I don't, don't give me a compliment. It's really important for success in your career factor to get comfortable with who you are. 
for the very, very minimal reason of being able to show up that way all the time and be consistent with who you are. So here's what I'd like everyone to do in the chat, in the chat, share, share one of your, and I'm typing this in. So if you wonder what I'm doing, uh, and for those of you on Facebook live, do that in the comments as well. What is one of, one of your hidden success factors? We're going to do a speed round of inspiration right now in the chat or on Facebook live in the comments, everyone share one of your hidden success factors. And once you've typed yours, scroll through. And if you say, Hey, you know what? I'm also like, uh, my goodness, you're scrolling so fast. They can't see the names. If you're like drew and you've got the same characteristic as drew, or you also are, uh, are simple, are, are really good at simplifying complexities or you're empathetic. I'm seeing a ton in here. They're thoughtful. They are flying into the chat and I am, I have a lot of superpowers and uh, looking at it without my reading glasses right now, that fast is not one. So we're going to reflect upon it afterwards. As everyone's typing this in, I, I encourage everyone to save this chat. I encourage everyone to go through and scroll through this. And when you find that someone else is just, you're like, oh, I'm also like that. And I didn't think about that. Add it to your list. Start building your list of hidden success factors and so that you can figure out what makes you different from everybody else who might show up on paper with the same degrees, the same certifications, the same background, and the same work experiences. This is what the world needs. This is what people are hiring, whether they're the clients or a job manager or a hiring manager. They're hiring you with your degrees and your skill sets to back it up. And you gotta know how to do your job and be good at what you do. I mean, that's just a flat out, like, gotta know your job. So, so if you're also like, I'm looking at these different pieces and mentoring people, people are mentoring. Uh, maybe that's one of your hidden success factors is that you use them because you're a mentor. All these different pieces, scroll down and find something that's like you and add at least five more to your list today and save this chat. And if you say, well, I'm not really analytical. I am, however, this and it inspires you to do the opposite, then write down what's the opposite. While you're doing that, we're gonna jump ahead because there's one more, another way that you can really think about this to add to your list of success factors and really figure out what they are, which is to figure out the environments and your priorities, which again, may not be other people's priorities. And under the last six months, they may have changed. Consider for yourself in your past and where you are now, what are all the activities that you regularly do in a week? In which situations and settings do you thrive? Maybe you're someone who has discovered that you really are more successful virtually because the interpersonal dynamics are just too exhausting for you and the logistics are hard and this allows you to have equal footing and more conversations. Maybe you're the kind of person who really thrives in environments that are fast paced and where you get to work as part of a team and where there's a huge amount of flexibility in, in you being able to do your work without having to, to think it or, or get micromanaged. Well, no one likes to be micromanaged. On the other hand, though, there are people who really thrive with supervisors and in settings that are more structured where you know what time you're gonna start and you know what time you're gonna finish and you know what you need to do during that time. And that for you is an environment where you thrive. There is no right or wrong. These are the values of professional values in getting clear so that when you're looking to work with clients, when you're looking to work with an organization, when you are interviewing a company who they think they're interviewing you, you're also interviewing them to make sure that the supervision, the management style, the culture, the, the diverse, whatever it might be that's important to your professional values is the culture and the support that they can offer so that there's a match before you even step into that. So once you know this, you're then able to communicate it in interviews and client meetings. The other piece on this thing is there may be some stories of situations that you're able to do now that you couldn't before which are those failure stories, which there's a bunch. I like to know why things work. I'm a total neurology, uh, you know, like neuro, I'm, I'm really big in neuro, um, neuro change community and, and understanding why the brain works. I, I want to know why things work. I mean, I read a whole paper on the science behind stories because I wanted to know why this stuff worked. And here's the simple part. When you are sharing a story, it translates across generations, cultures, 
uh, religions, everything. Everyone loves a story and everyone has a story. So as you're building up your career pathway, make sure you're developing a short cache of stories and start with stories where you've been hugely successful, where you felt like things were going so well, time went by so quickly that you didn't even, like you just flew by because you were having so much fun with the work and it didn't feel like work, where you were really shining, where you felt like your best characteristics really came out. Or think of a failure story. If we ever chat and you want to hear my biggest failure story that I have now turned into one of my greatest successes because boy, was that a learning curve, I'll be happy to share. And I use those sometimes in interviews or with clients or with my team because those stories, as you're listening, the science behind it is that you begin to relate. You're listening to understand and relate to the other person's experience. So it gets us out of our own head and into more of that dynamic relationship, which as networkers, you guys know, is the key to success. And we're going to talk about that a bit more later. Watching the chat, really great pieces. You know, people who are now identifying, oh, I work better in a flexible environment. I'm building an environment that supports each team members. Robert, thank you for that contribution. You know, Sabrina was sharing about willpower to never give up on your dream. And I am hope you, you know, if you can get one new strategy or one new idea to help you keep going after that dream. And then I'm also going to share, give yourself permission to allow your dream to change shape. Give yourself permission that if you thought this is what you wanted, that maybe now it's not really what's going to make you thrive. That's not really going to be your ikigai. Your ikigai may change over time. Very likely it will. How you define success may change as you grow and as you learn. And maybe it won't. Check in with yourself every six months to one year. I do a check-in on my ikigai and how I define success every year on my half birthday. So that I know that I've done the first half of my year, have I achieved success as I define it? And for the second half of the year, is it the same? Do I still want to achieve the same thing I did the earlier? Or do I want to do something different for the next six months? And doing that, and then a bigger check-in every decade. Another tip and strategies, and because each six months, every year and every decade, you're going to have a whole bunch of stories and some new success factors, which will allow you to tap into your H2O. When I say H2O, I want you to take a minute. Bruce Lee says, be water, my friend. And when he talks about be water, my friend, he talks about when you pour water into a cup, it takes the form of a cup. And if you pour water into a pool, it takes the shape of a pool. But water is always the same. I, chemistry was my favorite subject, probably because it's about making connections. And I love connections. People connect all the connections. Your H2O, or just two little H's and an O, two hydrogens and an oxygen, those success factors, that you started to list are your H2O. So you've got your spice rack, and then you've got those two or three core things that you use to lead yourself through your career, through your conversations, that guide your decisions when things go sideways. And when you know your H2O, when you know that no matter what those circumstances are, no matter what other people's perspectives are of what you do or what you say, you don't lose your H2O. And it's, it becomes your compass. So taking the time to get clear on your H2O will allow you to move into step number two, which is to communicate them. All right. So yeah, oh, I do. John, I love Bruce Lee's interview. I mean, I'm on his website. I follow him. Um, uh, his daughter just wrote a book. So if you're really interested, Bruce Lee, uh, his daughter just wrote a book that I just got, and I'm super excited for whenever it shows up. I pre-purchased it. So while we're talking about that in the chat, let's take another poll. There were a chunk of you, I mean, the majority said that they were very, you guys were interested in learning how to strategically communicate your success factors. So let's take another poll. Up the poll, the poll is open. And how would you, are you awesome at communicating your professional success factors? Are you pretty good at it? Needs improvement? Or, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. Let's see where we are with this group. Typically with, with this, with our community, what I've learned in the network after work community, as soon as, especially after we start exploring this a bit, there's no judgment around this. It's just, it's better to know than to suppose. Where are you right now? So that you can start with your starting point and build upon it. 
because we're about to get to the important part also, which is about how to leverage it. All right. So the majority of people here are pretty good and most people need improvement. You're not alone. There's a reason why I have focused so much time on this and why I'm working, I'm, I'm writing a book on this subject because so many people, communication is a habit and it's, it's a struggle for so many people. So well, we could spend a whole hour just on this piece. I wanna give you a few tips and strategies that you can begin to practice so that you can build a new habit of communication. Okay, so I'm gonna end the poll and share the results so that everybody can see what I'm seeing in terms of where the group consensus is in terms of success factors. We are all in that needs improvement area, the most of us. There are a couple people here whose success factors are, I am awesome at communicating my success factors. If you have a tip or strategy with your awesomeness that you could please share with our network after work community, because I can't cover everything, nor do I know everything. Please add your, here's a tip and strategy to communicate your success factors because I'm, so, I'm, I'm awesome at it and I'm really good. What do you do? And add a tip into the chat for everyone, please. And for those of you who are pretty good and you're like, I'm pretty good at it, what's something you've done really well? And share it into the, into the chat for those in our network who are really struggling right now. So they're not getting just from me what I can do in this short amount of time, but also from you. Let me get into the stop sharing. And let's jump right back in to how to communicate it. Tip number one, ask yourself some questions and give yourself permission to create your own success story. What do you want to be known for? What is it that people come to you for at work? What is it that people come to you for in your service? Not what they used to come to you for, but what are they coming to you for now? Maybe what they used to come to you for is something that you can't offer right now because of the pandemic or current situation. What can they come to you for now? What do you want them coming to you for now that they couldn't come to you for before before? Get inspired and think, all right, I got to think innovatively and creatively about what do I do? And if you're focusing on your core H2O, if you're focusing on your Ikigai, then the how you achieve your Ikigai is less important than what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's less important than how you're doing it. Give yourself permission to restructure your business. And if you don't know, talk to someone in this network who has experience in doing so. And really consider how do you want people to talk about your business? How do you want people to communicate and describe you and your business? And if you're like, I don't know, then if you're an entrepreneur, or you're in the client service, or you ever have been, how would your most favorite clients, what three words would they use to describe you? Go look at your feedback. Look at an email that you got from them. How are they describing you? What are they thanking you for? And is that something you want to continue to get paid for? Is it something in the Ikigai world that the world needs and you have a gap? Like you're like, I see a need that this world, and I'm not seeing anyone fill it, or they're not going to fill it in the same way I do. So let me figure out what I'm good at. Let me figure out what I love to do. And then let me figure out what the world needs so I can get paid for doing all of those things together. And then think about the language around that. Tell other people how, in, in my networking groups, one of the activities we did last week, which was super awesome, was we asked one another, what do you want to be known for? And how do you want us to describe you? And then in the next round, we spent time introducing the others in the room. When other people know what you want to be known for. This Network After Work community is super amazing at championing, championing one another. If other people know who you are and what you want to be known for, they'll know how to talk about you. Now, that doesn't mean you always have to show up with a consistent elevator pitch. Uh, those who have known me for, for quite a while have observed, hey, Erica, you don't always say the same thing about what you want to be known for or what you do in every week or every meeting. I'm like, no, because I look at who's in the room. And I consider how would I change what I'm saying because I'm dialing up my career, my business right now. So what I'm talking about may not be like what's on my chart or what's on my website or what's on my whatever, or what I do. Yeah, I mean, this is my current job. But I might talk about the areas in which you, are, you might want to talk about where are you dialing up. And then when you're in a next networking event, when you're in your next job interview, talk about what you're doing where you're dialed up and not so much where you are now, just talk about where you want to be as if it's your current tense. And then people will start hiring you 
for what you want to be doing because you'll just tell them that's what you do. And then have the skills to back it up and build those concrete skills to get there. So consider where you're dialing up your career or your business. And then consider, go back to your list. What, which concrete skills and which hidden success factors are you using to dial up your career or your business? And then you can communicate that to others so they know how to speak about you when they're not in the room. And here's one more strategy before we jump into the leveraging and then I'm super excited to answer some of your questions that are already starting to pop into the chat. And you know, Mary and Arely, there's a lot of different um, strategies going into the chat as well. I'm gonna highly encourage everyone to save this chat afterwards because there's some really good juicy advice coming from my colleagues. This network is amazing. So as you're looking at this, here's another strategy. So often we're listening, listening. Everyone thinks they're a great listener. Almost none of us are. We just flat out accept that. We all think we can listen. It's a habit and it's a skill. We need to get into the habit of listening to understand rather than listening to respond or listening to interject and, and talk about ourselves. And in networking, this is especially important. So we start by asking questions. When you ask people questions about their stories, about their success factors, about a specific project they're working on right now, um, about why they chose the career path they did, how do they define success, it helps you listen for clues about them, which help you figure out, okay, this is what I wanna be known for, these are my success factors, where, which of those do I wanna highlight with this person or with this group of people in this particular situation and setting? So you're not always going in with the exact same script. Now you don't wanna be all over the place where you've got so much going on that people don't know what to come to you for because you're just so diluted with your, you're just not clear. But you can rotate it around. So then you adjust what you share about who you are and what you do based upon the answers that they give you. We're not interrupting. Not, not, not interrupting. We're saying, oh yeah, 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 I'm just like that. You listen first and then say, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, you work in the IT? Well, let me share about a project that I did where I was doing some system change where I integrated 11, 11 IT training platforms. True story. Do I ever talk about integrating 11 IT training platforms ever in networking? Uh, rarely, no, it's not what I'm gonna lead with. I talk about virtual trainings or I talk about career pathways or I talk about you know network after, whatever this is. But if I'm talking to someone who's IT and they're talking about systems change, then I'm gonna build upon that because there's a skill set there. And I tie it to what I still wanna be known for. Is that what I wanna be hired for right now? If I do, then I'm gonna focus on it. If not, I'll shift it and connect it to something I do want them to know to, that I wanna be known for so that people start to learn about you and everything you've done because you can't hit everything you do. And those of you who are starting your career now, Start paying attention and, and talk to people. Listen to the questions that are asked when networking so that you get into the habit of asking thoughtful questions and listening to understand earlier in your career. It's a lot easier to build the habit than to try to fix it later. All right, uh, lots of different things going on in the chat. So let's go into round three, strategically leveraging your success factors. How do you do this in the virtual workplace? How do you do this when you are in a job where you're feeling very, very unsatisfied or unsupported? How do you do that when you've got a supervisor that maybe doesn't recognize your strengths and your, and your success factors and you are just feeling belittled or beaten down and you just, it's, you're not in that environment? How do you then strategically leverage your success factors to make a change if one is needed? How do you leverage your success factors to give yourself more opportunities? and to navigate things when things go sideways. Recognizing that there's not, oops, not a perfect solution or one answer that's gonna fit everybody. Give you a few strategies. Again, if you've got additional strategies that you're getting inspired by to share, please add them to the chat for our colleagues. We're here at Network After Work. A strong network equals professional opportunities, doors that will open. 
And when you build a strong network, people are like, but how do I even do that? You know, I mean, I, I had someone in my IT business communication uh, program that I said, I know, Eric, listen, everyone's always telling us go network, go network. No one ever teaches us how to do it. So there's some other things that were going on. Well, one, it's about you practice. You practice the strong network and don't worry about the numbers. I mean, are there tons of people? Like, could you build up a network of 5,000 people? Yeah. It's more important from my perspective to build a strong network of people who who you have relationships with, where it's not about quantity. It's about the quality of who you're connected to so that you know how to support them and they know how to support you. And it opens up the doors because when you have strong relationships, when things go sideways, it's a lot easier to address that conflict. When you have a strong network, opportunities are going to open up that you don't have to go. And again, I'm going to go back to the very beginning when you can leverage your success factors. And that's part of leveraging your network and building a strong, supportive network. Then the success becomes the magnet. I'm going to go back to that magnet where success starts to get drawn to you and you're not always chasing it. So here are a few tips about building a network, about the how. One, take a look at your network right now and make sure that you are intentionally and strategically and purposefully aligning yourself with people who are different than you are diverse backgrounds, they represent multiple generations. I learn a ton every time I have a conversation with one of my, uh, my college interns. Um, I know Kate and Janie, you're here today. I know you guys, I, every single day, you give me something new to think about. Uh, and with the generations of folks who have been around and they're like, Erica, let me tell you about my 70 years and my dad will give me some tips and advice. Representing multiple generations, we all have something to share with one another and teach. People who think differently than you do. It's about finding a place of respect in the common ground that if nothing else might inspire you to consider something a little differently. And most importantly, when it comes to your career pathway, the people who will support you. Inside companies, we talk a lot about mentors and I'm, I'm very active in, in mentoring. Uh, I'm very active in the Chamber of Commerce here with that. And anytime I run mentoring programs and I help others run mentoring programs, that's fine. Differently is a sponsor, someone internally, if you are in a company who has a position of power, who can open a door, who will sponsor you internally and get you opportunities or access to meetings and conversations and advancement opportunities that you might not just get. That is different than a mentor. So you want to have those people who can open those doors and surround yourself with people who can reflect your shine who, when you are in a conversation with them, you like who you are when you're with them. I always get that advice for relationships on a personal level. I will say specifically, I am very conscientious about who my strategic partners and impact are. Who do I align myself with business? If you look on my LinkedIn profile and you find out what I'm doing and who I'm doing it with, it's strategic. It is because when I am with them and I work with them, they bring out my shine. I respect who I am. I like the sides of me, those hidden success factors come out. I'm collaborative, I'm engaging, I'm an active listener because that, that's what I value about myself. And I've been with people where I'm like, I wanna interrupt, I wanna shut them down. I'm like, I'm so impatient with what they're saying. Like, I just, I'm like, oh my God, you're, I, I just wanted to get it in and, and jump ahead. I, I have to be really conscientious about that. So surround yourself with people who you know bring out your best sides, who believe in you more than you sometimes believe in yourself. Every single one of us need a champion more than one and find those people who say you're bigger than that you're bigger than that and you have a voice and you have a responsibility to build those success factors and give the world what it needs and go from there you can do this and then they motivate you to push yourself up even if the level is this so when i talk about pushing yourself up a level i'm going to get to that in a minute and show you what that staircase looks like and go back to the water metaphor for a moment. I want you to consider what water does when it runs into a challenge, a barrier, when things go sideways, when something absolutely unexpected and horrible, you've lost your job, you've been fired, you've been eliminated. If you ever want to share stories about that, let me know. But look for that open space. You know, I'm a dancer. So when I'm on that floor and I got 30 people around me, well, pre-COVID and it'll be there again. You got to look for that open space, move around that furniture, those different pieces. When water runs into a barrier, our giant mountain, it does not stop flowing. 
it finds a way to go over or under or around or finds the cracks and it trickles through that rock. It trickles through that mountain and eventually that river over time, it is a long journey. It is not a one step piece. Over time, it is not the water that changes. It is the mountain until eventually you end up with something like the Grand Canyon. Always look for the open space and recognize it's a journey. And in our last couple of minutes before we switch to the Q&A, here's one of the examples of steps that I was talking about. You've got to strategize with perseverance and check your growth mindset. If you've got to look at where you are in your step right now, how do you typically approach a challenge? How are you considering your career pathway? If you look back on your career pathway, is it filled with, with challenges and I can't do this and I'm really frustrated? Are you somewhere at the bottom where you're just like, I've got a fixed mindset. I won't do it. I can't do it. This is never going to happen. That self-talk, that self-doubt, those quiet little voices later at night. Let me go back to that for a minute before I jump on, because those quiet little voices at night that come up, you're not good enough. They're giving you this opportunity, but you know what? I don't really have enough degrees or enough. I need more time and practice before I take this job. And you second guess it. Mm -mm. You surround yourself with someone who can bump you up that next step. So your past, I want to do it. Some of you right now might be like, well, I, I want to do this and I still don't know how. Maybe some of you are at that, okay, I've been hanging out with Erica for an hour. I'm going to try to do this. The goal is to get to that step where you're like, I can do it. I will do it. And when you start getting into that mindset of every day, I can do it and I will do it. I will figure out the people who I can surround myself with that will help me do it so that I'm not trying to do this by myself. When you're leveraging your strengths, I've got my concrete skills. I've got my hidden success factors. I know what environments I thrive in. I know my success stories, my failure stories. I know what I've learned from all of those. I have learned new things about myself over the last three to six months that are now part of my success factors. I went through the NAW chat and I got totally inspired by all these other hidden success factors. And I added a bunch to my list and I am, I am determined. I will do it. The success will start to be the magnet. So you don't have to work so hard. And use one another as a resource. The next time you're at the next, if anyone else is going to be in the October NAW networking event with me and we end up in the same room, let's ask one another this question. Who do you know who can help me to, no, you got to know what you're asking for, uh, will help me to uh, build this skill, who will help me to get more courage, who will help me to learn how to network, who will help me to connect with the companies or organizations who are my target market who can connect me to someone who can provide me with an internship, who can connect me to someone who's hiring for X, Y, Z, or who has talent because I'm looking to hire for my team and I need the right people that are aligned with our organization. And start building your box of ideas and sharing ideas with one another. Share a resource with people. If you have some other strategies, uh, I love it. And I want, Anne, I want you to type one more. Anne, I know you just said I can do it. Anne, I want you to type, I will do it. And do it now. Own it. And make a commitment to yourself and to this entire NAW committee. So I'm, gonna, I'm looking at Anne right now in that chat. And I'm, wait, I'm watching for Anne to type, I will do it in those same capital letters. There you go. And add another exclamation point. That's the kind of confidence and enthusiasm that people are hiring for right now. We need people who believe in themselves because if you don't believe in yourself, then how are others going to believe in you? The ultimate piece, and we're going to start to go to some of the Q&A. Ah, oh, Robert's in there. All right, Anne, I love all those pieces. Robert just put in the I will do it. If you're on that step where you're like, all right, whether I believe it, here's the thing. There's a whole thing right now with affirmations, and we could spend a whole hour just talking about why they work and the science behind it, but just get into the habit of positive self-talk. And catch yourself and replace it with something else. If you're like, I'm not good enough. I don't, no, 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 no. I will do this. I can do this. I have a skill set the world needs and it is my responsibility to get it out there. Whatever level that looks like for you, aligned with success as you define it. And remember is that you are identifying your additional success factors because you, I'm hoping you have at least a list of five to 10 right now. Ideally, over the next month, see if you can get your list of hidden success factors and concrete success factors up to about 50. It takes some time and you may need to work with some other people and you might need to ask someone else, hey, what do you respect, appreciate, and admire about me? 
find out what they have to say and add those to your, your hidden success factors. Huh, didn't even know you saw me that way. That's interesting. And remember, it's not about who you know. I mean, it is so that you can be the person who's championing other people or sponsoring them. When it comes to success factors, when it comes to leveraging and creating a strategic career pathway, it is about who knows you. I don't mean like who knows you, like, oh, there's Eric and she didn't know. Who knows you? And showing up as your authentic self. Showing up with more vulnerability in professional settings than you might otherwise. So that people get to know your hidden, your war maybe one of your hidden success factors is warmth. I'll tell you right now that every single member of my training team, every single member of my strategic partners, everyone who's who I work with, who I work under their umbrellas or they work under mine, my I really figured out. It took me about a month ago. I was like, wait, I just figured out they all have one characteristic and it's warmth. Wouldn't can't put that. Well, I mean, I guess you could put it on the job description, but you may not. That who knows you knows you who you are. Because that is what people need. The world needs you and all of your magic. So on that note, we've got a few minutes together and I am, Mary, thank you so much. I am thrilled that you were able to be here today as well. Uh, and this is awesome. I'm looking at, so now here's what we are. Stay connected. Um, for those of you who are members of NAW, uh, Natalie has shared with me that, and uh, Natalie and Tatiana shared that these will, this is being recorded. And it's gonna be shared with the slide deck into the members only section of NEW. If you're not already a member yet, I, I've been a member for years and this has been the greatest community. I've met people who I'm in business with now. I've met some amazing people who have become my friends. Really amazing community. I'd recommend you consider it and reach out to Natalie or Tatiana, get more information if you need to. Here's what we've got. We've got 10 more minutes left and I am here to answer your questions. So I'm going to go back and I'm also going to check in because Natalie has been very helpfully scrolling through today uh, with her eye on some pieces with, I asked a couple people who were here early to toss in some of their biggest questions from the beginning. So it's way in the beginning of the chat and I'm going to scroll through. My question for you is this, what questions do you have for me? Which of these do you want me to, is there something I said that you'd like me to elaborate on? Is there a specific strategy or an example in either identifying your success factors, communicating your success factors, or leveraging your success factors that I didn't hit upon in enough depth for you, or something in that that I didn't hit upon at all that you're super curious about? Uh, going through these different pieces, uh, uh, oh, plug and play communications. Thank you so much for being here today. That was awesome. Uh, Robert, can we touch upon who will pay me for what I love to do? Yes. I'm going to say reverse engineer first and figure out what the world needs. What does the world need? So the first question you want to ask yourself, Robert, is what problem are you solving? If a company is hiring, it's because they need someone to solve a problem. And the problem you may be solving is a, a need for someone to, whether it's someone working in a call center or they need someone at an executive level. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, then you need to know what sol problem you're solving for your client. For me, every problem I solve, no matter what form it is, is a communication problem. So I would first say what communication, what, what problem are you solving? And then figure out what do you love to do? And then you want to go find out what companies and what industries are addressing the problem that you know that you want to be part of solving and they will pay you for showing up and helping them solve that problem. So that's how you get what you're to get paid what you're worth. Now you do need to recognize what's the industry standard, uh, what is the average pay scale for the industry that you're stepping in. I would do your homework and do your data. Data informed decisions are incredibly important. Don't get wild and don't underestimate yourself. So don't just say, well, I don't know if I should be making this much. No. Know what the rate is and then always ask for a little bit more and let them negotiate you down within a realistic window. So I would say, Robert, that is how you go and, and how people are going to pay you for what you love to do. You've got to look at all four pieces and map it out. Check websites. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. They've got a lot more search uh, features right now. And if you, if you happen to be a paid member of LinkedIn, you can go in and they'll give you data about specific companies. You can see who they've been hiring, how much hiring they've done. You can get a chance to get an understanding of what problems they solve. And if they're solving problems like you can, they'll pay you to be part of their team. 
How do you develop confidence? Mm. Oh, I would like to do in a whole hour just on that question. So we I would see say, a few questions um, yeah. in regards to job search. So I don't know if okay. you want to touch base on that. Those were all the way in the beginning. Um, but we did receive a lot on that. So let's see, any thoughts or ideas when it comes to rebranding, networking, moving from one industry to another? Translatable skills. So when you're rebranding, so one of the things everyone's like, I have to redefine myself. You don't, you just have to recommunicate yourself, which is not the same thing. When you figure out your H2O, when you figure out your hidden success factors, when you figure out the skill sets that you have built, now, if you don't have the concrete skills that you need to move into a different industry, then you need to take the responsibility to figure out how to build them, whether it's getting another certification or whether it is, uh, you know, taking a class or working with a coach, whatever it might be, to build the skills, the concrete skills you need to be attractive to the industry you want to step into. You already have translatable skills. So, for example, if you were, if you've spent your whole career in the restaurant business, you've got interpersonal skill, conflict resolution skills, you've got uh, customer service skills, you've learned how to respond and not react, you've learned how to stay calm and cool underneath trying situations, you've learned how to engage with lots of different people who you don't know who's coming into the room, and that translates into some amazing skills for your resume where you can talk about it in job interviews that even though on your resume not look like how does a restaurant business translate into a, uh, a customer service position that you're going after, it does. So get really clear on those pieces if you're moving from one industry to the other. Look for where the common threads are. And what you want to communicate is your H2O. Your specific skills, your specific translatable skills. And then you have to have a story. Come up with a story and get clear on a situation that you handled or navigated that's related to something they're hiring for and how something you did in the past. How would that translate? What did you learn in that that can then help you be successful in this other position or job that might at first look like it's unrelated? If they are completely unrelated industries, you're going to really need to work harder to have that bridge to get from here to there or here to where by really getting clear on those concrete skills and then building up those those interpersonal skills, the hidden characteristics. So that's what you're leading with and make your resume tied to it. And I would also go and look at job descriptions. So here's the one thing that I'm not, that I sometimes see not happening, that isn't happening, that you can easily do to make yourself stand out. Under the concrete skills at the top, if you're good at conflict resolution, put conflict resolution. If you're great at juggling priorities, put time management and juggling priorities. And use the language from the job description that you're going after into your resume. And then I'm also going to do this. If you're counting on just applying for a bunch of jobs with your resume and you're not building up people relationships first, you're probably going to run into more barriers. There's always been a piece where doors get opened by people who you know. So coming to these events and saying, this is the kind of job I want. Who do you know who I could speak to? Who do you know who could teach me about that industry, about what the needs are, about what the problems are to be solved? And then ask people in this network, and start having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who are working in the industry that you would like to be working in, and then see what doors start to get opened for you. If you're just shooting resumes out in your job search, I'm, I'm not seeing a ton of success with that. And now other people who are recruiters may have, look, I'm not a recruiter and I don't work for a staffing agency, so there may be recruiters in this network or a staffing agency or hiring managers or HR uh, professionals who can definitely speak to this very differently than I can. I do know that the translatable skills are going to be very, very, very important. Natalie, does that answer those questions? I do want to make sure I address the question that came up about how do I build confidence? And the first thing, I just real quickly, which is first, Amy cut. So you might have heard this quote, uh, fake it until you make it. And then you might have ho heard this quote, uh, fake it until, uh, you know, the fake it until you make it. Well, I'm going to take it one step further. Amy Cuddy says, fake it until you become it. You tell yourself every day, I'm good enough. I can do this. I'm confident the world would need what I have to offer. And even if that little voice inside of you is saying, no, you're not, no, you don't, whatever that little, no room for that. And you keep saying, yes, I am. You build it up until it becomes a habit. And one day you wake up and you're like, I really do believe that. 
You've got to start doing, you fake it until you become it. And if you're not certain about Amy Cuddy's work, she talks about body language and there's a whole science behind body language and opening up yourself and putting your feet on the floor that releases um, endorphins and decreases your cortisol and your stress levels. And it makes you more confident. There's some physical things you can do as well. And if you really aren't feeling very confident right now, you can take a pen and stick in your teeth like this. And it instantly makes you smile, even if you don't like smiling and you're not feeling very confident. And you do this. It'll trick your brain into releasing endorphins and dopamine, and then you'll start to feel better and more confident. You get in a better mood just by sticking at your own pen or your own metal straw. It's COVID-19, and I would have said that beforehand. So on that piece over there, Tatiana's adding some, some different pieces in. Uh, Jones typed in pieces of all the effective, empathetic, oh, all the E words, uh, the confident, the organized. Um, and yeah, Ronald is uh, Dr. Dr. Shapiro just added a few things into the chat as well. Uh, based upon experience, incredibly helpful. Like I said, there's a lot of people here who offer a different and equally valid and important perspective. So don't just take one person, don't just take what I'm saying. Build upon it and go from there. And I just realized that during the questions, what I wanted to do was stop my share. So I apologize for that. So that we can have a little bit more time with just seeing one another and seeing our pieces and getting a chance to get engaged without the distractions of all the rainbow uh, and the sunset and the sunrise on the screen. So in the last couple of minutes, Chris, thank you so much uh, for all of this. Um, I hope you have an impactful rest of the day. Uh, we are hitting, we've got two more minutes. Uh, Natalie or Tatiana, were there additional questions that came up in the chat that I have not yet addressed, whether it's about the job search or career pathways or something else that maybe I hadn't seen that you saw? Yes, we have a question that came in the Q&A um, section of Zoom. So the question is, while exploring our inner capabilities, we often end up making mistakes and taking wrong decisions. How do I validate whether I have taken the right steps, specifically talking about starting an entrepreneurial journey without any prior experience? Hmm. Lots of different pieces in there. So let me see what I can hit upon in the time that we have. And then I'm happy to have another conversation. One, build a network of entrepreneurs. First, start connecting with other entrepreneurs and ask them the same questions because you're going to get different answers. Second, the right steps. There is entrepreneurship is like this. Like I, my, the way that I've built my business successfully over the last couple of years or the last five years is not the way someone else would have maybe done theirs successfully. So I would say have a conversation with more than one entrepreneur. I will also say that what you may want to do is join an entrepreneurial program because I, mean, I did that early on, even before I thought I was going to do my own business and being in a network of other people where they were teaching us about systems and processes and branding and marketing so that I could figure out which of those steps were the right steps for me. And that, that's what I'm going to guide you to do as well. It's, there's not necessarily a prescription. I would say get really clear on how you define success and make sure your systems are in place and your processes are in place and you're communicating what you want to be doing and you expand that network of people who can help support you get there and who can shorten your learning curve because the entrepreneurial piece, there are ups, there are downs. If there was one easy way of doing it, way more startups would be successful. So we really want to make sure that you're leveraging, and that is where being an entrepreneur, leveraging your hidden success factors is if you're, if you're, for example, if you're an entrepreneur who's selling, uh, you know, you're a personal trainer or you're a massage therapist, or you are an acupuncturist, or you are uh, a consultant, or you are, you know, you're selling trainings or you're a coach, you are different than everybody else who on paper or on that LinkedIn profile might look or sound the same. You've got to lead with your success factors about what makes you, you. So I'm looking at this now. We're at 401. Uh, Natalie, I want to respect our NAW's time and commitment and our network today. And I'm going to turn it. Thank you again for, for having me here today. I really do look forward to connecting people. Oh, and Natalie shared, I forgot to mention this. Yes, I yes. shared a 10 minute video that I created about leveraging your success factors. It was originally designed for a find your path uh, program uh, that was um, that is launched by one of my my dear friends and colleagues who is here today, Tom, uh, and it's a high school program. I made it as neutral as general as possible for people of all career pathways. It's quick, ten minutes. If you are a mentor, share it with someone who's a mentor. If you are just starting in your career, use it for yourself. If you are a mid career person, then use it and get inspired to continue doing what you're doing or take your career in a different direction. 
share that resource with someone who needs it, who couldn't be here today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Erica. This was great. I hope everybody enjoyed her presentation and I hope you all have a great day. Mm -hmm.